We head from Burlington Flats, about five miles south, to West Burlington, to the West Burlington Pizzeria and Deli. The new owner, Bradley, puts his own spin on pizza with great combinations like barbecued rib pizza, breakfast pizza, Philly cheese pizza, and seafood pizza with his own homemade Alfredo sauce. I've owned this place in um, just over four months. Uh, I just something I'd like like to do. I like making food. It's fun. Uh, we do the seafood pizza. Um, let's see. We do the rib, the chicken wing. Really anything you want. Different kinds of sauces we use. Alfredo sauce. A lot of different things. When I was talking to Bradley about his food here, he was rather modest. He shouldn't be because. The Rockin' Reuben was just that. It was rockin'. And believe it or not, it's only $4.99. You can also get homemade pasta, homemade desserts. It's hard to believe that in such a small town, you can find a young restaurateur who is really putting in all of his effort to make this a very, very, uh, the fine word, the fine restaurant right here in this little town of West Burlington. When you drive along Route 80 in West Burlington, you can't help but notice the beautifully upkept buildings and sign inviting you to the Owl and Moon. This tiny little gift shop is brimming with jewelry, handbags, specialty foods and teas, face and body care products, and books, including children's books by the owner's daughter. With all of the beautiful carpentry work, it came as little surprise when the owner, Lori, told us that her husband restores period homes. Busy in the back barn is Jim Briggs. He and his son Jared are currently restoring an 1810 Georgian home in the village of Morris. Other projects they've worked on include the restoration of the Sanger Mansion in Waterville and building doors for the Otisago Hotel in Cooperstown. We head back north to Burlington Flats to a colorfully curious woodworker shop. Jonathan Dowdle has been carving his own decoy since he was a boy. Although most of his work is collected as art, his sculptures are functional. The functionality is for the hunter in him, the painstaking detail in the painting for the artist. Well, I've always been a duck hunter, and I like making things that I use myself, my own equipment. So I started making decoys, oh, about 35 years ago. Uh, first ones were very crude out of construction lumber. And like anything else, when you stick to it, you start to progress and you just get better and better at it. Well, it's important to me is the history behind decoys. Uh, it's a truly a part of American history because we're the only country in the world that's used them for a long period of time. Uh, the oldest ones known were found in Nevada in a cave. They were made by Native Americans and they've been dated at 1,500 to 2,000 years old. And they hit their heyday here just after the Civil War. And that's what we refer to as the market gunning era where people made their living by shooting wild game and selling it to restaurants and hotels. And that's when the decoy carving industry or the decoy making industry really took off. And that continued to about 1916 when the federal laws were enacted to protect waterfowl and shorebirds especially. Uh, each one uh, has to sit in the water absolutely level. Uh, if it doesn't, it's not going to fool the duck. So I have to take each one after it's carved, put it in a tank of water, and then adjust it by attaching a weight to the bottom in the proper position so it sits absolutely level. Uh, the weights that I use now uh, are copies of old originals that were used back around the turn of the century, which I had to make a mold for because the originals just aren't available anywhere. And what this does is, once it's attached to the bottom of the bird, it serves both as a keel to keep the bird steady in the water, as well as a weight to keep it level. Another very important factor in decoy is that when you're out there in the dark and you're putting them out in the water, they have to be self-writing. If you throw one in the water, it's got to wind up right side up. If one's upside down, all your work's for nothing. Mm -hmm. And so that's another reason why they're weighted and balanced. Uh, I was hunting with this one. This one is, I've been hunting with now for about 10 years. And you can see it's a little beat up, but it's still in pretty good shape. But I was hunting with this last year, and I had it out in the water in front of my blind. And it was a slow morning, but from nowhere, a goshawk came in from behind me and just clipped the bird on the head, just enough to rock it in the water. Then the goshawk peeled around and climbed, waiting for the ducks to take off so it could hit one. And when that didn't happen, they 
goshawk turned around and left. But that made this my favorite decoy, and if it fools a goshawk, it'll fool a duck. And so this is one of my favorites. You can see and purchase Jonathan Dowdle's work at the Cherry Branch Gallery on Main Street in Cherry Valley. Or visit MohawkValleyLiving.com for contact information. Loomis gang lived long ago near Sangerfield. Counterfeited, murdered, and stole. They sold stolen horses they had hidden in the swamp. A ruthless bunch of criminals, I'm told. As legend goes, Wash Loomis still rides his horse. Generations upon generations of families have made Burlington Flats their home. Nothing attests more to a community's strength than how they pay tribute and say goodbye when they lose an elder. Robert C. Arnold was 91. He was a hunter, fisherman, beekeeper, and a farmer. The Arnold family was kind enough to include us in the community's celebration of his life. Uh, my grandfather lived here for 91 years and within a half a mile of this church. Um, for part of it on one side, um, up on the hill and for the other part down over here at the family farm. Um, it, it, it amazes me how whenever there's anything that happens in this, this little community, everybody is there for you. You know that, that we stick together. You might not see them until the time where you really need to see them, but you just know that we're here for one another and um, it's a, it really is a nice place to live. Well, my grandfather drove a school bus for the Edmiston School for a number of years and, and probably two-thirds of the people in this building today were escorted to school or home by my grandfather and um, um, that, that's, that's neat to hear the stories and, and um, the Arnold family in particular came here from Warwick, Rhode Island in 1790 and um, we've been here ever since. My, um, my children, Katie and Emily Arnold, our 10th generation Arnold's here in Burlington Flats. Wow. It's the community aspect of all of it. Um, we, we have a strong, a strong background, um, mostly agriculture. Um, we're very proud of that. And um, you know, we have a lot of history here and um, we just in, enjoy ourselves here. Robert Arnold was buried in the cemetery behind the Burlington Flats Baptist Church alongside generations of Arnold's. The church is still active with three services every Sunday morning. You're invited to their Family Harvest Soup Day today immediately following the 11 a.m. service. The community celebrates autumn with homemade soups today at the Burlington Flats Baptist Church at 101 Arnold Road in Burlington Flats. Mohawk Valley.